Welcome to Dare to Dream podcast. This is Debbie Dashinger, and the show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. If you love energy work and healing and you want to do it anywhere in the world, go to Dr. Dane, D A I N, here, H E E R dot com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Dare to Dream is ranked in the top 100 best podcasts in USA and self-improvement on all of Apple Podcasts, as well as ranking in the top 50 podcasts in many countries around the world. If you love this podcast and you'd like to see myself and the guest animated in real time, go to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. I'm a certified coach and my expertise is visibility in media. I coach people to write a page turner book, take their book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I pull back the curtain. So my clients have the system to be interviewed on media and podcasts, and they get massive results. I show people how to find and use media exposure so they can locate their tribe, fill workshops, and way more. They gain exposure and sell books in the most positive, easy way. If you'd like to get some free tips and tools so you can learn what your message is and you can get booked on media, go to debbiedashinger.com slash message. D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash message. Get your free tools and templates there. My guest today on the show is Amanda Jane Clarkson. Do you want to know how to elevate your self-worth, net worth, and life worth? Amanda Jane Clarkson is a self-made multimillionaire, best-selling author, podcaster, international speaker, successful entrepreneur, millionaireist mentor, and chief executive officer of the Millionaires Magazine. Amanda has shared the stage with world-renowned business leaders such as Dr. John Demartini, Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, T. Harv Ecker, Ida Butros, and Australia's former Prime Minister, John Howard. You can find out more about Amanda Jane Clarkson at millionairesmagazine.com. Welcome, Amanda Jane Clarkson. Welcome to the Dare to Dream show. It is so great to have you. I am absolutely delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Deb. I've been looking forward to this for a long time and just mm. to have a real and raw conversation with you. Yeah, me as well. I, I want to start from an interesting standpoint because having just read your bio, which is really impressive, and I hope is really inspiring for people who are listening and saying, I'll have some of that, please. I'll have some (laughs) of that lifestyle, some of that work that I love that really creates a financial situation that makes me feel good. And here you are, totally gorgeous, in your 50s, yum, yum, and you're doing this passion work that fulfills you with women and people around the world. Was your trajectory, Amanda, always like this? Was it always about this kind of work? And uh, what were you doing before you got to this job, if not? It's a great question and a beautiful intro, thank you. But I wanna be real clear and upfront. Where I am now has not been an easy, straight pathway. But I've known since I was very young that I always wanted to live this life by design. And what I mean by that is I hated conformity as a child. I went to an all girls Catholic private school where you had to do this and had to do that, strict parents. And I just always wanted to break away from that. And I knew that to have the life that I dreamed of since I was a kid, because I'm one of five kids in an average family. and I realized that it, you know, to, to have the life I wanted, I had to find a way to make my own money, make my own pathway in life. And I literally failed everything at school, every single subject except religion and art. 
<laughs> but then again, my father's sister was a nun who taught us. So I think I only passed religion because of her. And I left home at 16 with nothing except a VW Beetle. You remember those cars back in the 60s, mm -hmm. 1965? Yes. Packed to the brim with all my <laughs> junk. And I moved out of home. And I've been by myself since I was 16. I never went back home. And but I'd always had a vision to start a business, but it wasn't easy. I literally had 33 different jobs, didn't like any of them. I know it sounds crazy, but a lot. I swear to you. I said, I had That's almost one life. job after another, after another. I don't, every two to three months. Long? No, every two to three, six months max. Mm. And I would whinge and whine as you do when you're young and you know, still do sometimes. My mother would say, don't be bitching to me, Amanda. If you don't like it, change jobs. That was the advice I got. In hindsight, I'm kind of glad now that she didn't mollycoddle me and tell me to stick it out because I didn't like what I was doing. And I think that was key for me, Deb, that if you don't like what you're doing, do something about it. Don't stay there and whinge and whine. And so 33 jobs later, I got into business. I realized I was just not cut out for a job, started different businesses. And I've had 14 different businesses, many failures, a few successes, highs and lows. I've made money. I've lost money. I've had really down days, high days, everything in between. But I always knew in my heart I was here to serve. And I love nothing more than sharing my mission and helping other people get the life that they want. I struggled getting the life that I love for years, but now I get to help other people do that. And that's just what I live for. I, yeah, I am in my 50s. I actually, uh, I actually retired for three weeks. <laughs> it didn't work <laughs> for me. <laughs> and here I am now where I get to have conversations with you know, gorgeous women like you, just hopefully having an impact. When you talk about how pleased you are, here you are, the arc of your heroine's journey after going through 33 <laughs> jobs, starting, leaving, starting, leaving, and then finally, you know, in the last 14, realizing, okay, there's something along the business line that's calling to me. And now here you are as a mentor. Is there anybody you've helped as a mentor that you found Somebody started out much like you, didn't really have anything, was a bit lost, not on a path that you've been able to assist who's really a rock star now? Oh, yeah, I love that question. The, the truth is, along my journey and pathway, I had a, I discovered personal empowerment back in my 30s and realized for things to change first, I needed to change and millions of lessons thereafter. But when business finally worked out for me and I started getting the rewards that I'd worked for, I realized that I'd had some sort of formula for that. And so for many years, we were on the speaking circuit, myself and my husband, doing wealth creation seminars all over the world, all over Australia. We went to America, we went to London, and we got to speak in front of crowds of from 30 people, up to 5,000 people wow. sharing an everyday story of how someone from my background with all the gear and no idea, if I could <laughs> figure it out, anybody could. And I think, you know, people look at you and think, oh, you know, you've made it. I, I don't even consider myself successful. I consider myself on a mission and a journey still. Mm. But um, the biggest reward for me is seeing somebody go from, feeling hopelessness, feeling like there's no answer to changing their life profoundly, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and especially financially. Tens of thousands of people became financially independent. Well, not financially independent. I think live their life by design because that's what we were teaching. That for me is what gets me out of bed every day. People think it's about money. It's not necessarily just about money. There's so much more to life. Mm. And anyone who comes to mind in particular of all those many people you helped who started in one camp and ended up that they had gear and an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I remember this uh, one couple was in a seminar 
And he was from a, a European country. I can't pinpoint where it is. It'll come to me in a second. And he was in his, he was 23 years of age. And he landed in Australia with a sports bag full of clothes. Now, him and his young bride at the time could barely speak a word of English, but they understood what we were saying. At the end of the seminar, they purchased the uh, information program that we were selling at the time or offering at the time. He became, he was so determined because he grew up living on a dirt floor. So they were so mm -hmm. poor where they came from. They didn't even have a normal house. He was one of nine children, mm -hmm. but he made it work because he was, he realized that in Australia and some parts of the world in America, you have it so easy that you don't try hard enough or you quit when you're maybe a couple of moments from success and he became a multimillionaire. Then he uh, brought his family into Australia, which all work for him now. Uh, and he has literally his whole family work with him and his parents have become financially free all from just attending that one seminar. And I think that story, his name was Christian. And that story has always stuck with me uh, forever because you get from somebody from such a background of adversity and hardship, to setting him and himself and his family free, it just shows that everything's possible with a dream mm. and good. taking action, of course. I love that message about finishing, right? And that we have it easy and not everybody has it easy. That's why in a lot of third world countries, an education is something they never take for granted. In fact, many of them are actually denied. So when they have that opportunity they do yes. everything and they study so hard and they follow through. I had something recently where I was um, for several months of this year, I got involved with an energy healing facilitators workshop. I had been fa I'm fascinated by this woman and the amazing work she does. And I had been the recipient of these healing modalities several, several times. And it was profound. So I thought, I want to learn this. So when I speak on stage, when I do my retreats, when I have my people, not only am I using my clairsentient skills to read people and help them, but what if I can do hands-on? So I do this whole course, I'm done. And then their testing was, it was pretty major. You know, it was finding many volunteers that you had to gift sessions to over long periods of time and tests and writing things up in summaries, and it was a lot. And I got to a point, a crossroad, Amanda, where I thought, you know, I love that I learned this. I know it. I don't know if I'm gonna use it. I think my gift is in my hands anyway, and I probably have other ways, other modalities I could use. So this was my thought process. I don't think I'm gonna finish. I don't think I'm gonna do the test. It's a lot. And I was telling my boyfriend, you know, I don't, I don't think I want to do this. I, I don't think I want to finish because it's, it's, it's a mountain to climb. Yeah. And he looked at me and he said, I can't believe you're saying this. Like, I don't even look at you like you're a quitter. Like, how could you start something and not finish it? I don't care what happens in the finish line, but how could you not go to the end and hold up a certificate? And I was like, oh my God, he's so right. You know, I've done this. I'm a certified wine specialist in a couple of countries. And, you know, I have, you know, a college degree and I have many things I've completed. And I thought, who am I? Who have I become that I'm <laughs> exactly. thinking about quitting? And so I was like, okay, I'm a hell yeah. I am a hundred percent in. And I did, I finished it. I finished all the volunteers. I finished the testing. I finished writing. I did. I had to do three different tests and summaries and all sorts of things. I turned honestly, my package was so big that when I scanned it, it cost seventy two dollars to properly scan it and submit it. And I was like, whatever it takes, I'm doing this to the bitter end. So I know in my heart that I followed through. I completed. That I will feel good when I look in the mirror exactly. and appreciate myself. I love what you just said there, Deb about who you become because what I love to talk about with my people is it's not what you get but who you become that is the greatest gift mm. and 
people sometimes feel or think that business or uh, the pathway is all about making money and having stuff but you soon realize it's not about that it's the people you meet the lives you change and the person you become when you look in the mirror Mm. and you feel really good about the day's work that you've done whatever that is how big or small but if you can impacted somebody's life made a difference I think that's what I love the most and I I know you do as well it makes such a difference but you've got to finish you've got to be disciplined you've got to be committed to it so damn easy to quit so easy it is and how many regrets might people have when they quit whether even if it's subconscious and you know much to your point Amanda because I align with something really was purely for me. So I felt good about me and I, I know I have stick to And what ended up happening is the people who volunteered to receive the healing sessions, and I had to have five people and they each received several. And it was a lot of writing up notes and them writing things before, during, after. What happened to a person is they said these healing sessions changed my life. One person who had uh, broken up with his fiance and they'd been estranged for six months, they ended up getting back together. And he said, every time you gave me a session, all of a sudden we'd be in contact. Then we'd have a date and it worked out. Uh, Somebody else, you know, health issues cleared up. It was amazing to hear people at the end report back to me. And that was unexpected. I thought, oh, you're just laying on the table receiving. Isn't this nice? Thank you. And they ended up saying, no, thank you because this actually turned my life around. And I was like, oh, maybe that's why I had to finish as well. Yeah, yeah. And that wouldn't have happened if you'd not finished. It's just, you know, pushing yourself that little bit each time. And I think that's really gratifying too, when you actually say, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to finish this. But from my experience too, and having so many jobs and so many businesses, <laughs> sometimes there comes a time, I call it a, like a life jacket. You know, when you have a jacket in your closet and you've been wearing it for years, maybe even a few months, and you put it on and you just know you don't look good in it mm. or it, you've outgrown it and it's tight and it's uncomfortable and you just, you just, yeah, you know it's not right. Sometimes for me, a certain job or a certain business is just the wrong jacket. But mm-hmm. I feel that's different than quitting. So there's difference. If it's the wrong jacket, change mm-hmm. it. But if it's just through, I, I just don't want to push myself or I don't want to be uncomfortable, then I've got to ask myself the question, is it the wrong jacket or am I just taking the easy road out? So I hear you saying that discernment at that crossroads is really important. So, exactly. you know, no, no. Heal or know thyself. So to be able to check inside and say, yeah, is it just, this is a wrong situation, wrong person. It's the vibe. It's just off. I know it's not right for me. And then honoring that and saying no and stopping or saying, no, I'm copping out. I'm really trying to quit on myself or somebody else, but actually it's time to go the distance. So discernment to know which path to take at what time. Yeah, it, that is perfectly said because otherwise we can spend months, if not years, beating ourselves up, feeling like a failure, mm-hmm. uh, feeling less than, for instance, it might be a certain business where you love it and I just doesn't make my heart sing, for instance. And then I know it's the wrong jacket, but you, someone might say, keep going, keep going, keep going, but you just know it's not right for you, yeah. then you've got to make that decision. If it doesn't make your heart sing, doesn't make you just get out of bed or somebody has to crack the whip. Because some people say you're a great motivational speaker. I'm not a motivational speaker. I come, I like inspiration, inspired speaking, not motivational. That was when I was a personal trainer, <laughs> making somebody do something they don't want to do. And you've got to ask yourself these questions. And I think that a lot of people forget to trust in their own intuition. So I love your tagline, which is elevating self-worth, net worth, and life worth, if you will. 
So I want to start with the first principle about elevating our self-worth. Are there ways that you recommend that entrepreneurs somehow assess who they are in order to bump that up, but, you know, to really inside and out feel great about who they are? Yeah, I, you know what? Self-worth really starts with self-awareness. Who are you? What do you want? I remember growing up, I would get such a hard time, first of all, because I was a failure, perceived a failure at school. Then because I left home, I didn't even get to grade 10. Uh, I barely got through grade 10, actually. I didn't do grade 11 or 12. And I left, left home with nothing. And you should get married. You should have kids, right? That was the upbringing I had back in the 70s and 80s. And I didn't want to get married and I didn't want to have children. I knew from a young age it wasn't my pathway. And so self-love for me begins with awareness. Who am I? What is right for me? And it's breaking away from that conformity that so many of us, especially women, live with because we have the guilt or made to feel guilty by maybe our friends, people we hang out with. I got so much ridicule for years, Debbie, because I didn't want to have children. What's wrong with me? You're so greedy. You're only thinking about yourself and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> but this is where self-love comes from. Asking yourself the questions, what life do I want? What do I want to feel like when I wake up of a morning? What makes my heart sing? What am I going to do to change the world or even change one person's life? This is what I really focus on about self-love and not feeling guilty about what society thinks you should do, your parents, your teachers, religion. It gets hot under the collar, some of these subjects, you can imagine, right? I came from a Catholic background. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, I remember my father once came home and he said to my mum, because I've got two sisters, and he said, there's a little lingerie shop downtown. I've been doing some tiling work in it. And it's kind of like a walk-in, walk-out situation. I think we could buy this business for our daughters really cheap and get them started on their pathway to being an entrepreneur. We were 19 at the time. I was 19. And my mum turned around and she said, no daughter of mine is having a business. She's going to get married. She's going to have a bunch of kids. And that's the end of that. And I thought, that's not my picture of the world. That's not what I want. And the question I always put to people is, how much self-love do you have? You know, be coming aware of, are other people's decisions right for you? And it's having the courage, Debbie, to say, thank you, but no, thank you, mum. That's not my pathway. <laughs> but some people find that so hard to say. What did your mom think as she witnessed you become who you've become? You know, it's interesting because, you know, we grew up in the 60s and the 70s, which are different now. And we didn't have the amount of education as in personal development. I don't think they ever read a book in their lives, except the gossip magazines and what was on the radio and TV or church or, you know, their gossipy neighbours talked about. But I would get laughed at a lot um ridiculed by lots of friends and family and people around me because I wasn't not what they call normal and over the years you know for and this is not a please don't feel that this is an attack on my parents because you know mum and I are really great friends now and I wrote about her in my book I was a very angry girl for many years I had a real problem with my mum as many young children do growing up I felt that I wasn't understood I felt I wasn't seen uh, that they didn't get me or didn't care about what I wanted. So I was angry for a while, and I'll certainly say that. But for many years, 15 years, my parents had no clue what we were doing when we were traveling the world sem as seminar presenters. And um, But now, in her later years, she's, she's uh, really proud of me. But back then, I don't think they understood the choices. Mm. That's okay. Wow, what a maverick, especially to come out of a paradigm like that, a society, a community, a family 
paradigm and say, I'm forging my own path. I'm very impressed by that. Yeah. So here you are, you've built and scaled multi-million dollar business and you use that principle to help people become financially free. So what do we know need to know? So if money and um, this worth are rolled into the building and the scaling, what do we need to know? Even that it's possible, probable, doable, that we could have a multi-million dollar business that we could build and scale. A fabulous question. Well, if as I said, it comes with self worth. Know thyself, or know yourself, and know what you want, because to elevate net worth, which net worth can mean money in the bank, uh, and your net value to society as well. Who are you becoming? And that's why I say it's not what you get, it's who you become that matters. Enriching your own life so that you can enrich other people's lives. But truly to have money in the bank, because I talk about becoming a millionaire from the inside out, mm -hmm. depending on your values, because success in, in the simple terms is an inside job. It's not about chasing money or chasing wealth or chasing success. It's making sure you build and scale a business that serves people. Mm -hmm. And that comes from self-worth. Because to be able to serve other people, take your gifts and talents to the world, doing something that you love takes commitment, it takes dedication, um, and it certainly takes, um, it takes a proper for business formula, but it starts with you. And, you know, less than 1%, by the way, less than 1% of people ever become financially independent. Because so many people have stinking thinking around money. They don't Perfect. like to talk about it. Yeah. They feel yeah. like, oh, don't talk about that. It's worse than sex. Most people would rather talk about sex than money. I mean, they're both fabulous uh, <laughs> subjects. But ask women, as so many women, I'd be interested in on your viewers, they just don't like talking about money. It makes mm. people feel uncomfortable. I, I have to agree. And that's been a gripe of mine. I mean, some of my friends are very real and raw and I always appreciate that. And so we can have that conversation and I know we're talking the truth, but especially here in Los Angeles in the entrepreneurial world, I have found Amanda that a lot of people put on a front that yeah. I'm not talking about this because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm not letting you in on what's going on. And so there have been times where I've just assumed, oh, this person's doing great. They have a ton going on. They're so successful. And occasionally I've had a friend who knows that person intimately who will say, oh, by the way, they're struggling. Like, you know, this is their what real the circumstance. Gone. Yeah. And I think, well, how do you get help? If you're doing that or some other people, again, who appeared to be doing really well, and it turned out they're just workshop junkies. They went from place to place. They just kept throwing out their credit card, thinking the next workshop was going to teach them, save them, heal them. Finally, they'd get the golden ticket to know how to run their business. But they were so busy going to workshops, they weren't running a business. And so I find all of that fascinating. And so I love what you're saying, Amanda, because I think pulling back the curtain and saying, here's the real deal. Like, this is really what I make. This is how I handle my money. This is what works. I understand that there's privacy. I get that. But at some level, to be able to share with other people because you want to help elevate them, like what you're doing, I think is really important. It's a very important conversation. Oh, I love nothing more than talking about money. Uh, and people go, oh, you know, you're money hungry or money's not everything. Money doesn't grow on trees. Well, I say it's bullshit. You probably haven't got any money if you feel that way. Most broke people say money is not important, but money matters and money impacts everything that is important to you, your children, your family. I mean, 
I used to stand in, in on a seminar stage and say, put your hands up if you would love to have enough money to be to do all the philanthropic work that you would love to do, pay your parents' mortgage off, put your children through the, the best school that you want, go on two or three vacays a year, uh, wake up of a morning without a stomach ache, worrying about the bills you know, not lose your hair because you're so freaking stressed out about money, put your hands up and everyone put their hands up. But see, what I've seen along the way, and I've been guilty of it myself, this is not a judgment because this is just a real raw conversation. Um, we go through life and we want to look good on the outside, but to have money in the bank and build real wealth, it takes dedication and commitment to not spending your money holding your money and then popping that into assets that grow for us it's um a property but for most you know for many other people it could be in the stock market it could be in different types of businesses it could be in gold stocks and bonds and things like that and i'm not a financial advisor don't get me wrong but i know that it takes discipline and commitment to build a business hold on to the profits instead of spending them all and investing because the investments are what grows in the end and 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 i think that it's really hard to do that if you don't start and scale a business that you are aligned with because i love to talk about building a business around a life by design i'm all around life by design because i've never ever ever wanted to wake up hating my life so i love what i do here talking with you i couldn't be happier you know, this is what I love to do. I love to change people's lives. And so it doesn't matter what business you're in. You could be in the baby product business. You could be in the health business. You could be in any type of business. But the business has to be profitable and scalable. I'm going on a rampage now. Cut me off. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I can't hear you, Deb. I said, I don't want to, because I feel like what you're saying is really important. And um, one of the things you said, I want to hearken back to, because I've seen this a lot. I would love you to weigh in on this. So it breaks my heart because there are people who have not had money, right? And then they get money and that feeling of be, having been in so much lack and suddenly something comes and it's like, oh, yes, money, awesome, right? Which is a yep. beautiful thing. But the problem is then they start, oh, I wanted that outfit and I wanted that trip and I wanted uh, to work out at this gym. Whatever the laundry list is, oh my goodness. Um, they just start spending, 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 and it is not good. It is really not good. Or they give it away because they feel guilty. Yes. Other people can make you feel guilty. It's interesting to see the people who uh, ask for money or make you feel guilty about it. And I really believe a lot of women don't want to lose friends. They don't want to lose family. They don't want to be judged. Mm. And so they don't have money because they get rid of it. And, uh, what you know, there's a saying out there that money flows from those who don't have a value on it to those who do have a value on it. And it, I have a belief if you divided all the money up, because there's so much talk about it, uh, the, you know, rich get richer, the poor get poorer. But if you divided it all up and gave everybody an equal share within a certain frame, uh, time, uh, time mm -hmm. frame, it would be back in the hands of the, those who valued it, had a purpose. You've got to have a purpose for money because money, I say money's got four legs, we've got two, and you cannot chase it down. You've got to attract it by serving people. That's, this is my truth. This is all I know. Or I'm only sharing with you my story. Uh, I hope I don't come across preachy, but you know, this is just the journey I've been on. And the more I serve people, um, the more fulfilled I've become in all areas of my life. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to, you know, say, and for, I'm so sorry I was muted earlier. One of the hilarious things about working from home, I don't know about in Australia, <laughs> but here in America, like all our late night TV shows, 
everybody's at home filming because they can't go in the studios, right? Everything's still shut down almost a year later. And so they'd be wearing a beautiful suit, but they're wearing shorts underneath and their kids yeah. suddenly come barreling through the door and be on camera in front of a million people. And so it was with me a minute ago, here I am, this is my office studio with my dog, let me out, let me out. I'm texting my boyfriend, help. <laughs> and she's Mind under the table. <laughs> So I'm so sorry. I muted myself so you couldn't hear her go, let me out. And then you see oh, the door no. opening. Oh, it's all like, whatever. It's all happening. Oh, oh the, it's usually I've got a, a Burmese cat who swings on the door on the outside because he wants to come in. So he puts his claws in the wood and swings. And then the poodle who's under my chair will run over and tell him off. And I'm going, <laughs> I want a studio if you don't mind. Oh, that's great. And you can actually hear them doing all of this or, or oh, it's yeah, a there's visual? a fight going on in the corner and I'm trying to be all, you know, professional <laughs> over here. I'm trying to kick him under the table, but I can't reach him. <laughs> it's great. This is real this life. Space. Yep. So it's just good to address all this. I, I could tell, look, she's going to come in. She's going to do what she's going to do this <laughs> on. This is a very independent uh, dog I've got here. She's like, I'm well, at least you've got trousers on. Yeah, it's, that's why I always dress. Make sure I'm dressed. If I have to fly out the door, uh, I've got my clothes on at least on the on the bottom part. <laughs> well, thank you for understanding. So everything you're it. saying leads me to this because when you talk about how you show up in business, um, when you talk about telling the truth about all this, so one of the projects that you took on was Millionaires Magazine, and I want to tell people so they can also get their copy. I was so honored, Amanda, to be featured in one of your inaugural, not the very first, but certainly one of the inaugural magazines that rolled out. I was next to many people that I know in the business world, having been an entrepreneur for so long, and that was really fun. So what was your vision? What was it that kickstarted you so that you said, I am taking on this project, rolling up your sleeve, I'm diving in. <laughs> In my 50s, what was I thinking? <laughs> it's amazing, right? Fresh vision. Good for you. It just gets to the stage in life where, for me, as I've said, the most fulfilling part of my life, and I know this is why I was put on this planet, I love sharing uh, hope and a story and a vision for other entrepreneurs that don't quite believe that it's possible for them to get the life they want. And so shall I keep talking? I love it. And so after 14 years of being on stage in wealth creation seminars, my husband and I decided it was time to just take a break and he wanted to get into project management and stuff like that. He, he, he builds. And so I had three weeks off and it was the loneliest time of my life. I just loved what I did so much. I, I kind of lost who I was, um, I had a downtime, like every person, I have all my ups and downs and everything in between, like everybody. And I locked myself away in a hotel for five days to do some very deep soul searching, no phone, no visitors, no husband, no animals, nothing to, to think about what I want to do for the next 50 years of my life. You know, by now we'd, we'd had holidays, we had the dream home, we had the stuff, but I still had this burning desire to make a difference. And by chance, I ran into a, a young lady who's our publisher for Millionaires Magazine. And my vision or my mission is to impact and inspire 100 million women over the next 100 years through what I call the butterfly effect. I, I talk about it in my book I wrote because I really believe that it starts with us and our language, our words, our demonstration has such an impact on our daughters and our sons to give them hope and the belief that they can create the life they want by design, not one of conformity based on what we think they should do. And that's a million women a year. And so to get our message out to the globe, we started Millionaires Magazine, uh, which is a global stage where we get to interview beautiful women like yourself, Debbie, who have a mission and a vision inspired to help other people, elevate other people's message. And I just love that we get to do this 
And uh, yeah, and that's where it came from. And we're underway now, we're running into issue number seven. We've got tens of thousands of um, subscribers and we're just barely starting. But this is what I wanna do. I wanna leave a legacy with people like yourself that contribute and say, yeah, we can change. We can make a change to our daughters and our sons of the future and uh, change their thinking. How's it going? How is the project? It's still very early on. It's a right? baby. And I, it's a baby. <laughs> it's a baby. Absolutely. Because if we were having this conversation in five or 10 years, your hindsight and wisdom, you know, you could talk about the bumps and the moguls and everything. Every day. Oh, yes. But still in its inception, how, and I love that your tribe is finding you. Is there any other uh, pieces that you're discovering? as you step into this? What I'm discovering is that I think I can feel a shift and it's time. There are so many celebrities from TV stars to movie stars, but to also business stars like yourself who are just ready to put our hand up and say, yeah, it's time to band together and collaborate instead of feeling like there's a competition or pulling each other down. Of course, I have my up days, my down days. I want it to happen so much faster. But every night when I go to bed, I ask myself or I pray for wisdom. And I ask myself, is what I'm doing right now taking me closer to fulfilling the mission or further away? Am I on the right track? And literally, my heart sings doing this. I love this. And it's all self-funded. It's not your normal everyday type of business, but I can see such a future for it. It's going to go across into other countries, uh, into other genres. And I feel that we're just scratching the surface. And I don't believe it'll be the last time I see you inside the Millionaires magazine, because I know you have a vision and a mission to inspire and help women get their message out there and guys as well. Um, and so who knows, let's, let's have this conversation in two to three, five years and see where we're at. But Right now, it feels right to me. Uh, so exciting. You mentioned your best-selling book that you wrote, From Frustrated to Fabulous. You mentioned your magazine, The Millionaire's Magazine. First of all, where can people get their copy? It's a free copy. So millionairesmagazine.com. And when you subscribe for free, there's also my book called From Frustrated to Fabulous. It's an inspirational guide for women who dare to live their dreams, mm. not too dissimilar to your show, mm -hmm. Dare to Dream. And that is an eight hour audio of my voice. So I'm going to apologize up front. You've got me <laughs> in your ear, gorgeous, for so eight good. hours. But it's wow. my real and very, very raw story mm. of leaving home at 16 to all the stuff that I've gone through to where I am today and even the story of how millionaires came about. Because I don't think that we're here to play small. I think we're here for a, a purpose. And I love helping people find their purpose as you do, but having the courage to live their own lives instead of somebody else's. Mm. That's what really rings my bells. I am so curious, Amanda, when you say you went into a hotel room shut yourself away, soul searching, and you decided to do some processes to figure out, okay, I've done pretty well, and this has all been wonderful, but I feel the call of something else. I don't know what it is. Do you mind if I ask you what process or processes did you do while you were alone for those five days in the hotel room? I cried a lot. Because, to, uh, you know, I'll be right up front with you. This vision or this mission that I feel that I was called for felt so big, mm -hmm. felt so cumbersome and so hard. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to run away from it. And uh, I'd have headaches and I could feel it inside of me pulling. You know, the pull and the it's not like voices on the inside. It's not like that. It's a message. It was a deep knowing in my soul that I hadn't finished. My work wasn't complete, that I was here to keep sharing a mission or a story, inspiration, you might call it. And I tried to run away from it. And that's the honest truth. You're right. I had it all. Or what would seem I had it all, but not really because I was empty in here. And so I sat in that hotel room asking myself, 
why me? Why do I need to keep going? Why can't I just be normal? <laughs> why can't I just be bloody normal? <laughs> Have a great life, do nothing, swan around, drink champagne, but no. It wouldn't go away and I had to ask myself do I have the courage do I have the energy because I was in my 50s uh, do I because there's ups and downs and everything in between in business you know that I have some very down days some up days um, and how can I get away from this but I just couldn't and I thought to myself I said to myself this when I go to the end of my days and I'm lying there and it's my last day on this planet earth did I do everything I could with everything that I had? Yes or no? And if I walk away from this, I know that I will be uh, disappointed with myself and that I cheated myself out of the purpose that I'm here to do. And I had to put my big girl courage pants on and ask the universe to guide me, uh, which the universe guided me to my now business partner, my publisher, Robin Gipters. And here we are. But it wasn't easy, Deb. It was one of the toughest five days of my life. Mm. But I'm so glad I pushed through because I'm so fulfilled and I know it's the right thing. And this is why I say to anyone listening, become self-aware and that's where self-love comes from. Become self-aware and listen to the intuition that we all have and let your soul guide you because you do have the answers inside of you, as you know. I don't know anybody who receives a calling like that. If you're living a life, even though it seems quite big to other people, but it's clear that calling is way beyond the zone you're living in right now. <laughs> and a lot of that zone is unknown. How, to create, how do I create this? What does that look like? How am I going to show up? How am I, all the how, what, why, which we all know, none of those I questions. No I hate not having control. I've got zero control. It's like flying an aeroplane with a thing on my eye, with a, you know, like an eye patch or not an eye patch, but a <laughs> some kind of uh, blinders. Yeah. Yeah, blinders. Yeah. That's the word. I oh, know. What was I? I know. Yes. Somebody it's... has a plan for me. Mm -hmm. That is the million dollar leap, isn't it? That you're standing at the precipice of a cliff, you're being called. All this resistance comes up. And by the way, I think this is an extremely human response. I really do. I think if the response is to light a, a cigar and crack open the bubbly, that there really, there's not that much skin in the game, right? It's the big yeah. things like that, that have those huge callings that make us feel like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to show up. I don't know how it's going to manifest. I don't know if I got the chops. I don't know if other people are going to care about this if I put it out. It's so it's so much consternation that gets broiled up inside of us. And I think that's the ticket. That's when you know you're onto something. Because without that level of fear, which is, of course, unfounded, but that fear and also, like you said, loss of control, like, oh, this could all blow up in my face. It's almost the most beautiful recipe for like, uh-huh, that's exactly where you're supposed to go, girlfriend. That, that thing that you want to resist that scares the big girl pants off of you, that's what you need to do. Now you know where to go forward. That's your path. I just learned to let it go and let God or, you know, grand organized design or the universe, whatever, whatever people want to call it. For me, it's the grand organized design or the universe. I just said, guide me. I've let go of control. And you know what's interesting? From the very first magazine we released, we have had so many women just come to us, women like yourself, who so openly from your heart just give without wanting anything in return, without expecting anything. And I just know that it's not my will, it's thy will. And mm. I, because I don't know where it's going, Deb, but what all I know is that it's growing, it's getting exactly. legs. And we're booked out now to well into next year for the magazine with interviews. Yes. Thank you. Um, and let's just see. So somebody had a bigger plan for me than myself. And now that is... You know, that's what life worth is all about. That's the third thing, the life worth. What is it all for? 
Mm-hmm. It's one big journey. Oh, what a good lesson. And Amanda, what do you do on a daily basis? Do you have a ritual? Do you have a process? Yeah. What do you do on a daily basis that keeps you really aligned, really calm? You know, that, pl- that nice place we all need to exist from at least once every day. But what is your ritual or practice? I love this question. I think it's really important because I'm also a very grounded person um, and I'm very disciplined and that comes from an athletic sporting background. But I think that people have a fantasy about wanting it all in life, financial freedom and things like that. But that takes dedication, commitment, some sort of groundness. But I am, uh, I think one of my superpowers is I have priority list. So I have a big objective that I want to reach and then my priorities and I'm good at sticking to my top priorities. But the very first thing when I wake up in the morning, I've had this rule, my own rule for 20 years. I never turn on my phone. I never turn on my laptop. I put my magic outfit on, which is my running gear, my magic outfit. And all of a sudden I just feel well, I feel uh, healthy. I go down into my gym or wrote, I run on the beach, I'm a runner, and I give myself two hours of self-love mm. every morning, and then I tick off my big rocks, and I just stay focused. I, I say to women that I mentor, put your horse blinkers on, because there is endless opportunities and bright, shiny objects. I've seen mm. it all because I've been on stage for years. But when you know your purpose, and you have your objectives written out, because I always do it the night before I go to bed, Mm -hmm. my top three, I only have three to five each day, tick offs. When I wake up of a morning, I'm not scattered. I know exactly what I'm doing, magic outfit, gym, walk the poodle, um, have a great breakfast, and then I do my five big rocks. And, And nothing or no one can pull me off. Yes, sometimes the shit hits the fan or there's an emergency, but I can come back to it. But I have found from experience that if you do that every night before you go to bed, you sleep beautifully because there's no surprises. Mm. I don't wake up of a morning and go, oh my God, what am I going to do today? Because then the day owns you. I like that's where the control comes back in. I want to control where my day goes. I don't let other people control it. Sometimes, you know, things come up, but I just say, thanks, but no thanks. There is a lot in that. That was really good. I was taking little notes here. There was a (laughs) lot in there. I'm totally down with you. I also write the night before exactly what needs to be done. And then I number it. So I know if I get to whatever number, you know, and I haven't, you know, maybe I did three out of the five, no worries. I did the most important and it'll go on the next day. I'm fine with that. The one thing I really loved, I want to bring up, I love that was adorable. I put on my magic suit, <laughs> which is your workout outfit. And I love the fact that no phone, no laptop, like boom, everything's, yeah. Because what a huge setup, right? In your uh, mental capacity or emotional capacity, certainly your physical capacity to be that connected with your first one of the worsts you talk about is your first worth is self-worth. And if you're not taking care of yourself like that, that's huge. And, you know, the other day I had, um, my mother has Alzheimer's and, you know, that's a whole mine nother. Does. Mine does too. Unbelievable. Of course she does. Well, <laughs> another show, Amanda, like for real, it's deep for anybody who's got same with a parent, you know, and if you're the person, the go-to person, my other siblings on the other side of the country. I'm the only one here. It's, it's a lot. It's really yeah. a lot. Yeah. And um, my mom went in for a procedure that was supposed to help her and they discovered something and she ended up in the hospital. This is all happening by the way, right now. And so it was literally from the moment they made the discovery and don't worry, you know, it was like an infection in the leg kind of thing, but also a blood clot, you know, that's not good. And, um, So the moment the doctor decided to put her in hospital, the phone calls every seven to 20 minutes, I kid you not, needing help, needing help and paperwork and fill this out. And what about medication? Is she allergic? And what are, 
it was unreal. And then texting my family and everybody in the loop and who's gonna take care of her cat. And it went off the charts. And by the next day I could tell, um, I felt overwhelmed. I could tell my anxiety was so, it was, I knew it was bad. Why? I missed calls with clients like that never happens. And I was mortified. And of course I told them the truth and apologized. But I suddenly like, who's going to show up? Nobody's going to land with a cape on, right? And go, I've got you, Debbie. So I went, <laughs> I need to like, I need to show up and I need self-care. I have to stop everything right now because I am going down a really bad path. And I immediately went, time for a bath, hot Epsom salt, minerals, everything gets turned off. I call my girlfriend, what you doing? I'm having a hard day, cool. I'm taking you out to a French restaurant. We're gonna go have dinner. We're gonna open a bottle of wine. And we talked, like, it was just so beautiful. You know, walks with my dog. Like, I literally went, what does self-care look like in this moment? That's what we're doing. Everything else, the world is gonna keep going. They'll be fine. Exactly. And this, this piece you're saying, is if, if people only get one thing and they'll get a lot from you, but this one thing, it is no joke. It design, can design your entire life. You wanna have a life by design, you've got, exactly, you've got to design it. One email, one social media post can wreck you mentally and emotionally, mm -hmm. therefore it impacts physically. So I say to myself, who's the most important person I am because if I'm not in tip top condition, I can't serve the world. I can't serve people. And so I say, mm -mm -mm, sorry, I'm not interested in your, I'm just not interested. And you know what? For 20, 20 something years, it has served me beautifully because I didn't even send my first email till I was 40. Remember, none of this was around till I was late thirties. <laughs> We had the old phones and things like that. And it's just uh, now there is so much noise. This is the biggest problem. So much noise, mm -hmm. so much expectation on one person. Yeah. You can't do it all, but you've got to choose what you will and won't do for money, what you will and won't do for others, and really what you will and won't do to yourself. And this is the big message I want to get across, especially to women, because we want to be everything to everyone. We don't want to let anyone down. We want everyone to like us. But honey, everyone ain't going to like you because people will still say what they want or perceive what they want. So take care of self, especially your health. Mental health comes from physical health um, and vice versa from my experience. And everybody go out and get a magic suit that you can put on in the morning. Oh, yeah. I love that because that is such a powerful reference point, Amanda. Like if you have an outfit and a workout outfit, a running outfit, and you know, like I reach for that, that comes on, that's well, it. It changes, your, um, it changes your physiology. And you, you think, because a lot of people now working from home, right? They get out of bed, they've got their gowns on or their jammies and they don't get changed till 10 ah. or 11. Next thing, they're sloughed over, their shoulders are going, their body's going to rack and ruin. The moment you change clothes, I mean, if you put on a gown, you stand differently, shoulders in, shoulders back, tummy in. You know, this is how we, this is, clothes change our physiology. So if you put mm. your magic outfit on, you all of a sudden feel healthier. You feel fit. You tend to want to take care of yourself a little bit more. I say out with the pajamas after you get out of bed, get them off. Brilliant. But get something else on, of course. Get your magic outfit on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, Amanda, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I dare to dream that the, the mission that I feel or believe that I've been called for um, comes to fruition and that long after I've left this physical plane, uh, the legacy lives on and other women pick it up from where we've left on and uh, just keep empowering and impacting lives. It's my dream. You know, I feel like every year has its own message and I've noticed, or a theme, if you will, right? Like, and it's indigenous to me or to you in your own world, you're experiencing something like, I really need to learn this because it's in my face or it's showing up or I'm working on it. 
What is your theme thus far this year? What is it you're really learning for the first time? Uh, I think this year, for the first time, I'm really understanding the value of letting go of control and trusting more in what the universe has in uh, store for you. There is so much opportunity in these times that we're living in, but it's how you perceive it. And I think this year has been a real grounding for me because I travel so much that I've really gotten to know myself a lot more probably like myself a lot more, believe myself a lot more. And uh, I'm grateful for the for what we're going through this year. Mm. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate being here. And um, thank you to all of your beautiful listeners. I truly hope you found some gold in uh, our conversation. Gold from the Gold Coast from Amanda Jane Clarkson again. <laughs> Go get your magazine. It's millionairesmagazine.com. Very, very cool of her to offer that to you for free. And also the audio of her book, From Frustrated to Fabulous. And I end today's show with this quote from Parker Palmer. Self-care is never a selfish act. It is simply good stewardship of the only gift I have. The gift I was put on earth to offer to others. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast. This is your number one transformation weekly conversation. The upcoming guests are the authors of the international best-selling book compilation called The Ultimate Book for Dog Lovers. We're going to have celebrity dog trainer Ryan Matthews here, also renowned children's book author Hal Price. Uh, publisher Vicki Winterton. This panel is going to be amazing. And you're going to learn some information about dogs, pooches, canines that you never knew before. If you love the podcast, go to YouTube and watch us at youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And for all you awesome Dare to Dream listeners and viewers, tell your friends, tell your family about the show Dare to Dream and have them join in too. Take a screenshot of the show or of you listening and watching the show and send it. And I will send you something special and give you a shout out as well. We love knowing that you're enjoying this episode. Write about it on your favorite social media platform. And me, be sure to tag me, Debbie Dashinger, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R, so I can shout you out. I encourage you to let people know that this is your favorite conversation and podcast. And thank you for this amazing, amazing 13 years of being on air and on podcast and on YouTube with you. You've made my dreams come true.